Hey, how much do you know about your county? Do you know that there are many people who have given their lives for this county? And do you know that there's an organization working very hard to be sure those people are not forgotten? The organization I'm talking about is an incredible organization called the DAR. My name is Vin DeQuino, and our next guest wrote a book about a particular chapter of the DAR. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Carol Bailey and Libby Baker. Welcome and let's talk writing. <laughs> Thank you. Libby, Carol, you've been working very, very hard to put together a book that will help us be able to locate some of the heroes of the Revolutionary War. Tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you represent in this wonderful new book you put together. Thank you. Carol? Well, Libby and I are members of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution, which was an organization founded in 1890 and now has over 170,000 members. Wow. It is the largest women's service organization in the United States. Wow. There are over 3,000 chapters in this country and around the world. Um, our chapter, the Enoch Crosby chapter, was formed here in the county in 1926. Uh, it was named after the Patriot Spy Enoch Crosby, and it is the only DAR chapter in the county. And right now we are over 60 members, probably pushing towards 70. Libby is our registrar, she does the research. It is a lineage organization. In other words, you have to be able to prove that your lineage goes back to someone who served in the revolution, and we will get into more of the details on that mm -hmm. at a later time. L Libby, what is a registrar? <laughs> I'm the one who works with prospective members, uh, members of the public who think they may have ancestors that go the, you know, back as far as the Revolutionary War, so I help them prove it. So you do a genealogy check? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. With vital records, it has to be proved. It can't just be somebody's word or, mm -hmm. you know, on the internet where Not somebody has listed, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has, can't be hearsay. So the thing you have in common is that all members have some connection to the Revolutionary War. That's right. What is the Bailey connection? Ah, <laughs> my great-great-great-grandfather, Samuel Bailey, um, was a member of the 6th Duchess Militia, and he is buried in a cemetery in the town of Southeast. And going back to the early 60s, um, uh, we saw that cemetery, which was in total disarray, and um, it's in the process of being um, resurrected, and there's been a lot of work done on it. Um, getting back to the organization, the, there are three objectives of our organization, and one of them is historic preservation. And when Libby and I joined in 2005, um, about two or three years later, we got to thinking, you know, we should get together a list of the revolutionary patriots that are buried in the county and put them all in one place. Um, so we started working on it in four years ago. At least. At least. And we really didn't think it was going to make it to a book. We were just trying to get a list together. And so, then. Th so, this is a reference document that will right. help people be able to recognize where the Revolutionary War heroes are. That's right. Wow. There are 75 cemeteries in, in the county. Um, we visited 52 of those cemeteries. And there are. Uh, the person that could not be with us today is Jean Marie Perry, who did 99% of the photography for our book, and she also did the layouts. And she visited 52 cemeteries, and most of them were visited more than once now, over a period of so a year. So what you're saying is she's taken a picture of every one of those stones of all of those patriots? The ones that we could find. Wow. There 325 photos, wow. pictures, and there's over 420, 400 and, uh, 403 stones that we were able to locate so far. But since the book came out, we found two more. Wow. 
No, talk to me about research. I know when I was doing Hauntings of the Hudson River in Sybil, I spent hours and hours, days, months, trying to get all my information together. Where do you go? Where do you spend your time trying to find the information for this book? Well, <laughs> well, we started with Barbara Bai's book, which okay. is a listing of all of the um, stones in Putnam County mm -hmm. of anyone up to 1850 who born or died. And we, Carol and I sat on one very hot afternoon and started with that book. Then the research goes to DAR Patriots, SAR Patriots, um, the uh, New York and the Revolution and its several uh, editions. Uh, we worked in the um, Putnam County Historian's Office. Many hours. Oh, yeah. And Those people uh, were so much help. I was ready to put a bed in there. Yeah. <laughs> They're so awful. <laughs> um, yes. There are lots of websites out there. Um, uh, Fold 3 has actual digital images of pension applications, for instance, from the Revolutionary mm. War, as well as uh, service records and pay records. So we searched all of that. Let's go back to pension records because mm -hmm. pension records blew me away. When I was searching for Sybil Ludington, you, you know the story, mm -hmm. I was doing the book and discovered that most of the information we had on her was incorrect, was just not right. It said she had six children, she never had six children. <laughs> that she married Henry, she didn't marry Henry, Henry was her son. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things. Well, one of the things that cracked this case for me was the pension records. And it turned out that these pension records gave the information of where her husband served, how many times he served. It had letters uh, proving her marriage. A lot of real good information. Those things sat for over 100 years in Washington, D.C. Then I found out that they also have duplicates of all those records right here in New York on Verrick Street. So I visited Verrick Street a number of times to find that there was all mm -hmm. sorts of information. Uh, so tell us a little bit about pension records. You know, you've gone through pension records and they tell you who served, when they served. So you had to go mm -hmm. through and thumb through all that? We did. Um, we, in our book, tried to <clears throat> prove that someone actually served in the revolution, and of course the pension records were critical to that. The book also has people in it who, for whom we cannot actually prove that they served in the military, but they may have supported the, the, uh, the cause in, in other ways. But Enoch Crosby's pension record goes on and on and on. It's very long. Oh, yeah. it, it tells his whole story from the beginning to, uh, beginning to end of all, all of his uh, adventures as a spy. Oh, oh. And, and, uh, and muster rolls, that help. Yes, muster rolls are on are on fold three and probably at Varick Street as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, the pay records, you know, it will yeah. say served at West Point from this date to this date, and they got two shillings, and you know, so um, which, that was critical. Which was another thing that I discovered when I was studying Sybil, is West Point has a great research library, mm -hmm. and there's a whole lot of information. I mean, I found a whole bunch of information on her son, uh, Edmund Augustus mm -hmm. Ogden, mm -hmm. and was, uh, I mean her grandson, uh, was amazing, the information that's, that's there. And that was another thing that was really fascinating for me. Every library isn't the same. You could go to one place and find information that isn't anywhere else. So you have to do some real research, some real hunting to find information. Was there any surprising things that you found? Any, uh, you, I like to call them oh my God moments. Did you have any oh my God moments in this book? <laughs> where, where you were like, oh no, here it is. You know, someone or something that you were looking for that you thought you weren't going to find and then did? Well, um, I found a surprise in the cemetery where my Samuel Bailey is buried. Um, there is a man buried there named Turtleus Dickinson. Mm -hmm. And when we started doing the research on him, we discovered that he was, in 1770, 71, was the supervisor of the Southeast Precinct. Now this is before the Revolution, and it's before Putnam County separated from Dutchess County. When the war broke out, he, for whatever reason, decided to go fight on the side of the British. 
and he was captured. He was a prisoner. Um, after the war, he came back to this area. He lived for a short time in North Salem, and he died in 1801, and he's buried in the cemetery where my great-great-great-grandfather is. And he had a very interesting epitaph, which I would, it's very short, but I would like to read it. Oh, please. This reads, quote, Turtleus, sacred to the member, memory of Major Turtleus Dickinson, and whose character, energy, and enterprise, industry, and fortitude were united, kind as a husband and affectionate as a parent, warm and faithful as a friend. He had the felicity of being loved and respected by his family and highly regarded by his connections. And I no, thought, this is wow. On, is this on the stone? This, is, this, is on, this was on his stone, which wow. was in pieces in the cemetery. So uh, there is a new stone up there uh, in which this is included. But I thought this was an incredible epitaph for, to be written about someone who um, was on both sides of the war yeah. and still so highly regarded. And that was one yeah. very interesting surprise mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. came across. See, that's one thing about what you've done here that makes me proud to have you on this show. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If we do not teach the children of today about their yesterday, we're going to steal from them a piece of their tomorrow. That's right. And the other two objectives of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution is education and patriotism. And the DAR does a whole lot um, to support schools and to give scholarships and grants. In fact, uh, here in the county, we're starting to get a program uh, again to give uh, scholarships to students Wonderful. Uh, Wonderful. In, the t in the county. Because we have to think of today's youth. And today's youth ha has to understand where our country came from. That's right. The freedom, you know, You've heard this before too. Freedom is never free. That's right. It's never free. And mm -hmm. lives were taken. Lives were lost. Brothers, fathers. And we can't forget the families that were involved. The mothers who stayed home and had to raise 12 kids on their own, like mm -hmm. Abigail uh, right. Luddington. Yes. These were heroes too. And we need to celebrate our heroes and our children have <coughs> to know the people who came before them that's why the DAR needs to be applauded now the other thing that I need to say over and over again Sybil Luddington being on that pedestal on that lake the DAR put her there the DAR helped to recognize the fact that she was a hero and if it had not been for the DAR she would have been forgotten forever and that is criminal. We mm -hmm. can't forget the past. So let me ask you, on that note, I've been to a number of the cemeteries in this county. Uh, some of them I've been to with paranormals, which was a little spooky, but one of the things I've seen is that some of these stones are starting to fall apart, starting to get cracked, who takes care of these stones? Is there someone who does that? I mean, is, are we just recording who's buried there or are we preserving their burial grounds? Well, one of the aims of this book is to, to help preserve these records. Um, some of the cemeteries are cared for by the towns in which they yep, reside. I've seen that and I know some names involved in that. Mm -hmm. I know there are people who are trying to do that. Right. Some of the cemeteries are on private property, and you have to get permission from the owner mm -hmm. of that property before you can go to that cemetery. Right. Because those cemeteries are not where they were years ago. I mean, it may have been a church. The church could be long gone. Uh, I find cemeteries in the middle of the woods. That's right. Uh, there's a wonderful cemetery up near Cold Spring uh, where I think George Denny may be buried. Uh, and... It is amazing the size of that cemetery, but it's in the woods on private property and very hard to find. 
So there are a lot of those hidden cemeteries. So mm -hmm. I imagine you must have done some real mud stomping to find Oh yes, <laughs> Jean Marie has many stories about oh. her <laughs> yes. escapades. Um, but yes, but um, there was only, I believe, two cemeteries that she couldn't get permission to get into. Wow. That are on yeah. out of the 52. Wow. Um, and it took her well over a year to photograph all these. And uh, she went back to some of them like six, seven, eight times because of the light situation. Yeah, but yeah. But, you know, the stones are disintegrating, and unfortunately, there's also been some instances of vandaliz vandalizing yeah. and yeah. just natural disintegration. So that was another reason why we wanted to get mm -hmm. this book done. And it's a matter of, <laughs> you can't put this off for tomorrow. No. Because right. ev every day you wait, you're losing time. That's right. And you're losing history. Uh, there are many wonderful people from this county who unfortunately are in those cemeteries today and they took with them wonderful stories yes so we have to mm -hmm. try to preserve some of those great stories and that's what this does now I know you must have some shout outs there must be some people out there who have helped you with this book that you want to absolutely be clear to mention oh, uh, yes. any in we particular have, uh, quite a list. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please the, do. Starting with the Putnam County Historian's Office. Okay, yep. And they, they are so terrific there. They are. I, I go there all the time mm -hmm. and they're wonderful. So yeah, please shout yes. them out. Um, Betty Budney, the, uh, who's a member of the Putnam County Historic Cemetery Committee from Phillipstown. Um, Steve Hammonds, uh, Director of Support Services for the Westchester Putnam Council of the Boy Scouts of America. Judy Kelly Moberg uh, from the Patterson Historical Society. Priscilla Kersey, Putnam County Historic Cemetery Committee from Putnam Valley. Judy Lawrence, uh, Cemetery Committee from Putnam Valley. Tom Maxson, who is now the president of Kent Historical mm -hmm. Society. Bob Palmer, a dear friend of mine from the S Historic Society. Uh, committee from Southeast. Uh, Ron Taylor from the Patterson Historical Society. Mike Troy from the Historic uh, committee from Carmel. Brian Van Gore, who's now the town of Carmel historian. Kathy Wargus, uh, the uh, uh, Putnam former County president of uh, Historic Cemetery Committee, and Alan Warnicke, the former historian from the county and who's a member of the Westchester Putnam National Society Sons of the American Revolution. Those are any of the few of the people. Now, mm -hmm. some of those people are part of a cemetery committee. Isn't That's there right. A, like a, a committee that actually goes out to all these different cemeteries and tries to upkeep them in some way? They try, they're trying to get the towns involved in the upkeep, trying to get the, the ones that are on private property, trying to get those people involved. And, and some, quite a lot of the people do take care of the cemetery uh, which is on their property, which is, you know, which is a great thing to do. Now, do you encourage people to come to you to do investigations? I mean, people who think they might be connected but aren't sure? Yes. Um, absolutely. Um, going, in, in going back to what you had said before about uh, families and mm -hmm. honoring the families that were behind the Revolutionary War Patriots, where we found a spouse buried near the Patriot, we put a little red heart and we put her name there as well. Um, <clears throat> And the point is that it is a husband and a wife, and we do encourage people to come forward, add to what we have. Sometimes it's hard to find the last name, the surname of the wife. Um, we didn't search that as, as intensely as we did the Patriots, but um, husband and wife are there frequently in many of the cemeteries, and we encourage people, please add to it. There may be more stones. There may be, for instance, in the 1840 census, there is a list of um, pensioners and we can't find them. There's four or five of them and they were in their 80s or 90s by 1840. We know they're here. We know they're here buried somewhere. Yeah. Probably, you know, on the on the back 40 on the private uh, private property and there's there it's long lost. Uh, so we encourage people to come forward. Uh, we have made corrections and yes. uh, we found two I, editions since yes, the book came two, out. Yes. It always amazes me when I go to the cemetery with people who have never been or people who at least have never been to those particular cemeteries. You know, this mm -hmm. past summer we had a reunion f for the Ludington family, and we had Ludingtons here from Michigan, from Canada, and we went to visit some cem cemeteries. And 
it was amazing to hear them go, oh my God, look, that's the one that related to this one, who was related to that one, who was related to that. I mean, it's like visiting old family. So mm -hmm. I think you would encourage, I certainly would encourage people to go to these cemeteries and read some of these stones. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing the things you could find. When I was researching Sybil, I went to the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, and they are genealogists. And I was having a real hard time because I knew that the information I had on Sybil was wrong. And I wasn't sure how to get to the bottom of it. And I, I just couldn't make all the right connections. Well, when I went there, I found information by going to Sybil Ogden. And then when I went to Sybil Ogden, I found Edmund Ogden, who was her husband. It said Edmund Ogden married Sybil blank. No last name. So this researcher had no idea this incredible discovery that he had because under that was the information from the pension records that had been hidden all those years. Mm -hmm. And it had her wedding day, it had that how and where her husband died, no one even knew that. So it takes a little research and it could be a lot of fun. So maybe we can encourage people out there to do exactly that, to go out and try to find out what are your roots, especially children. And let children go in and find out who was their great 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 grandfather. That's right. Uh, and the oh, yeah. DAR in Washington owns three buildings, and and one of those buildings is a one of the largest genealogical libraries in the United States, and that library is open to the public, with mm -hmm. the exception for the week that our national meeting is down there. It's open to the public, and I it visited is that an building. incredible. You know what they have in there? A replica of Sybil Ludington's That's statue. Right. They got a uh, this statue, a replica of this statue, is actually right there in the outside the, the New York room. Uh, now you know that's a very interesting thing. I, I want you to know that I am a man on a mission, and one of my missions is to try to help get Sybil recognized as not the daughter of a patriot, right. but as a national patriot herself. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that. I have to, again, do research. A lot of things are happening today that did not happen 20, 30 years ago. It's called the internet. And this internet is starting to come up with some of these old books and digitizing these books. So information that we didn't know existed is now right there at our fingertips. So getting to know the internet a little bit might help people out there to learn a little bit about their families mm -hmm. and then again make some of these connections so that people who deserve recognition for their service to our country get the recognition they deserve. I know you've been trying to find some contemporary, um, contemporaneous uh, resources from mm -hmm. the time that she did have her ride. Right, like a letter, and a note, A, a letter, a note. Um, you know, the officers, uh, George Washington, uh, the, the yeah. letters that went back and forth, some kind of confirmation that, I'm that she contributed. Uh, I'm convinced. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we had always believed that Sybil Ludington's story came out in 1907, twice. Connecticut Magazine and uh, the memoirs of Colonel Henry. Well, now we have evidence that it really came out in 1880. And I have that documentation. What I'm trying to do is find out where she got that. Uh, mm. Martha J. Lamb, who was a well-known historian. This mm -hmm. is historical. This is huge because it brings our information from 1907 to 1880, almost within yeah. her lifespan. Mm -hmm. We're close. We're close. And it takes time. It takes effort. That's why you need to be applauded because this is not easy work. Is it? <laughs> Not at all. It wasn't easy, I don't even have to ask you. It's hard work and it does take some rolling up of the sleeves to do this and that's why DAR. Now, a new thing I discovered, I was very proud a couple years ago when I was given a bronze medal from the SAR for my work with Sybil. Uh, and I didn't even know there was an SAR. Uh, 
it was a, a well-known secret. It's not a secret. Not only that, recently I was told that there is a children's group. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be speaking at their convention in great, March. They have gotten in touch with me. Do you know anything about this Children of the Revolutionary War? Well, the C-A-R is the Children of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. That is a D-A-R uh, group for children. Wow, wonderful. And the wonderful. Uh, Highland Pass Society is uh, a local one, and mm -hmm. Enoch Crosby Chapter is one of the chapters that sponsors the Highland Pass Society. Yeah, that, that is wonderful, and that's mm -hmm. what we have to do. This is a family project. You need to go back. You need to find out who your relatives are, what they did, what contribution they made. So I'm going to hold this up again for the camera. This is a wonderful tome. It's a thick book. Uh, where do we get this book? I believe you can get it at the um, historian's office in Brewster. Good. It's probably the, uh, the easiest way to locally. Get a so copy you could of call it. Chris Mucciolo or Kathy Wargis or Reggie Smith. Yes. Uh, yes. There's a number of wonderful people there who will be willing to help get a copy of this. Now, where do the proceeds of this go? They, do they go to the DAR? Or? They go to our chapter uh, for um, other historical research. We have some projects Great. in the cemetery coming yeah. up. Uh, next year in the in the cemetery that Carol mentioned, uh, we're going to be marking the graves of several of the uh, patriots that are in the book. Wonderful. It will go to fund that. Who does this? The flags. Uh, some of these stones uh, have flags yes. with little stars. Uh, I can tell you about the story of the flags that are placed for the Southeast veterans. Okay. Uh, they used to be done almost exclusively by Bob Palmer, who is a World War II vet, and wow. um, uh, he's just turned 90, I believe, this May. Wow. He's no longer physically able to do it. Uh, so um, the VFW in Brewster has got the uh, local Boy Scout troop in Brewster involved, and there is now a Bob Palmer patch. Wow, wonderful. In Bob's wonderful. honor. Um, so the Boy Scouts are placing the over a thousand flags in the cemeteries of Southeast um, every so that they're there for uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Excellent. Well, people like that and people like you help to keep our county doing the things it needs to do. Don't forget our past. If we forget those who came before us, they truly will be dead. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Jim. Proud of the work you're doing. Continue Thank you, it. Thank Don't you. forget this book. Go out, go to the historian's office, get a copy, and thank you for joining us here today. Glad to have you with us.